We'll thank you, uh, worship team, again, for leading us in worship. Um, welcome. I know, as Barb said, I think we have a few friends here from Grace Fellowship this uh, weekend, and so we're glad that you're here uh, as they're getting the construction started on their place, which is awesome. And uh, Ryan and Mackenzie, congratulations. We hear big news, engagement, good stuff. Way to go. Well, this service is always uh, one of my favorites, always one that's a little different. It's just really a time of New Year's communion. And uh, we've built up a lot of great memories of these services over the years. My favorite was when we got to the building a few years ago and we had no heat and we crammed into a small room and had communion together, and that was a great memory of mine. I'll always remember that. But I, I am kind of, uh, to be totally honest with you, sort of a New Year's uh, junkie, um, not because of the college football and all that stuff, but I really do uh, have come over the years to love this time of year, and particularly love this service because it is a time for us to sort of reflect and to think ahead. And even though I'm as bad as the next person at actualizing my New Year's resolutions, I think the process is really an important one. I read a book uh, this year on addiction, and one of the authors of the book, um, after years and years of working with people that struggled with addiction and uh, fully understanding all the biological, spiritual, psychological, and social dimensions of, of addiction, which he fully recognized, he said, in the end, the question the addict has to answer is, is this the life you want to live? And I think it's a wonderful question and an important question for all of us to ask, is this the life you want to live? I spoke this week to a successful uh, ex-college athlete and he was just kind of reflecting on his life and he said that one of the best uh, pieces of advice he ever got was when someone said, don't let your memories be bigger than your dreams. And it's easy to sort of live in the past and it's hard to sometimes look forward and reflect and live with intention. And so I always come to this time of year and I come to this communion um, just really asking that question. Uh, really asking the question, uh, what kind of person do I want to be? And I think it's a good question for all of us to ask collectively. Um, it's a good question to ask, what kind of faith do I want to have? How would I like to grow spiritually and closer to the Lord this year? I think for us as a church, we're striving to create followers of Jesus that are thoughtful, authentic, purposeful, and relational. How do we understand what it looks like to grow in that way individually and corporately as a church? How could we become a place where we can help people get that way? Someone once said that uh, in order to successfully change, you need three elements. Uh, the first thing you need is vision. You need a picture of who you want to become. The second thing you need is intention. You need the actual intent and desire to change. And after the vision and the intention are in place, it's amazing how the means of change actually begin to show up in your life. And I think when it comes to communion, Jesus is offering us uh, both the vision, the intention, and the means. He invites us to the communion table and he creates a vision for us to be his people. And in order for us to be his people, we need to understand um, who we are. And who we are is lost, but incredibly valuable. And in order to win us back, Jesus uh, took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, broken for you. And the vision that he gives us in that picture is a vision of, of sacrificial love. We are invited into a relationship with Jesus Christ, with the God of the universe, and, the, and at the core is this vision of sacrificial love. 
You come to the table of Jesus Christ through the means of sacrificial love. And it's just good for you this morning to maybe stop and reflect and ask yourself, do you see yourself that way? Do you have a vision of just how deeply you are loved by Jesus Christ? That he would offer his body broken for you. And in giving you that vision, he's, I think, asking you and inviting you into a life as well. And the life he's inviting you into is a life that basically says that your life will take on greater meaning the more you sacrificially love other people. You're not just invited into a life of of success and trying to make it and trying to have everything work out. You're actually being invited into a life where the ultimate meaning of your life comes from where you sacrifice and where you love. And the communion table, in a sense, forms our vision of the people that we want to be. And in the same way, he held up the cup and he said, this cup is my covenant. This cup is my promise. This cup represents my agreement with you. God enters into a covenant relationship with you, a a relationship that is built on a promise, a promise that he will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. God is promising himself to you in these elements, and he's asking you, inviting you into a life full of promise. I don't know what brings you here today. I don't know what your 2019 was or what your 2020 plans are. But one thing that you can know is this, that you are promised the presence of Jesus Christ every step of the way. God is with you. God has not forsaken you. God will not forsake you. Your vision of your life should be a vision filled with the idea that you live a promised life. You are promised not only this life, but you are promised eternal life in the presence of Jesus Christ. And that that should shape your vision. That should shape what you see yourself as. That should help answer the question, who do I want to be? The other thing I love about the communion table is it takes intention. When you come forward and when you receive these elements, you are intentionally saying that this is what I want. We feed our souls on these elements. We feed ourselves on the very means of the gospel. And when you come forward, it is an act of faith. And when you receive these elements, the body and the blood, you are taking in Jesus. And the reason you take them in is because you intend to. And so that's why uh, we have what we call an open table. All who have faith in Jesus Christ and intend to recognize his death and resurrection as the power for eternal life in their life are welcome to this table. The only restriction is your intention. Maybe today is the first time that you've received this incredible promise. You're welcome to the table. Maybe this is the 10,000th time that you need to be reminded again of the sacrificial love and promised presence of Jesus Christ in your life. You're welcome to this table, but you come with intention because that is how change happens. And lastly, these elements serve as means. They, They are tangible elements. I love that our God is a physical, real world God. And the changes and the visions for your life and the life that you're living and the questions you're asking about your actual life, God, in a sense, sanctifies by giving common elements like bread and wine to remind us that he is in everything. And he's in your very life, the life you're living, the one that you're thinking about, the plans that you're making. And so I just kind of invite you into this season of New Year's, this time of reflection, this time of asking, who do I want to be? I invite you to this table. And I ask you to receive these means of change, these incredible elements that Jesus Christ himself sanctified for us. So the worship team is going to come back up and the, and the servers are going to come. And I just ask you, when you're ready, uh, to come forward and to come forward um, asking God to give you a vision. 
asking God to give you a vision for who you want to be this year. What life do you want to have? What faith do you want to have? And come with these, uh, the intention of knowing that, Lord, I know I can only be that person by faith. And, and receive these incredible means, this bread and this cup, as a, as a sign of God's love for you. So I'm going to pray for us, and then I'm going to invite you to come forward when you're ready. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you have given all of us life. And you long for us to live authentic, purposeful lives. Lord, may you speak to our hearts, even this morning, about who you're asking us to be. What kind of faith do we want to have? What kind of life do we want to live? Lord, thank you for these simple elements of this bread and this cup. Thank you that they represent everyday, real life, but sanctified life because they've been made holy by your sacrificial love for us. Give us the capacity this morning to receive these elements as a sign of our faith, to recognize just how loved we are by you. Meet us at this table, Jesus, and may our, may our lives be changed 